I was having a bowl of mushroom soup this morning when things started to look very weird. And that got me thinking. They finally listened. A great patch is incoming. So, as we all know, the controversy surrounding the 4.0 update and how it's had people in the community divided, myself included. Now, normally, I'm not really one for controversy. However, it seems that this time round, they have listened to the community and they are bringing one hell of a patch. So in today's video, we're going to go over what that means and what is included in this new update. So as always, first of all, it always goes to experimental branch on PC for further bug finds and, and whatnot. But right now, if you have experimental, you will have this brand new patch. Now, first of all, a new difficulty setting has been added, which allows players to lock themselves out of any further difficulty setting changes. Once enabled, this action is permanent. So this feels more like a compromise. It seems that they've taken on board what the community has fed back to them regarding essentially the difficulty, the new difficulty settings and the way that you can completely customize everything. And they have gone ahead and met the middle ground where they haven't taken something like that out the game but it looks like it is going to be here to stay however they have said look once you do change those settings you have the option to go ahead and lock it which i find it, it's it's okay it's, it's a great first step but what i personally would like to see with that is that they go ahead and move it into the new relax mode function where it just keeps it in its own little bubble and that way then people can chop and change the settings keep them the same permanently lock them whatever but then it doesn't affect for example normal survival or permadeath or even creative for that matter as well so it's a great first step they are listening and it's really good to see that they are including something and compromising all right, so the next one reads, the strength of Starship Specialization bonuses have been increased so that higher grade ships receive greater inherent bonuses to their stats. This scales steeply with both class and ship customization. So for example, the Explorer class ships will have significantly further warp ranges. So this is excellent. This is what we wanted to see because a lot of complaints about this 4.0 update was about how people's stats in the ships was was not as good as what it was before the patch. So for example, people had all these adjacent bonuses with all the technologies that they've installed and all of a sudden, overnight, since the 4.0 update, it's gone or completely damaged. And this brings back that in a big way which i'm really 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 happy about and again i want to take the time and say thank you to hello games for listening to the community feedback and it is a much welcome changed and rebalance but honestly don't even stop there because as well as damage shield and what bonuses starships now have an inherent agility based stat which benefits all maneuverability upgrades in the same way as the other specialization stats affect the relevant upgrades. Again, excellent, absolutely excellent. So the strength, the damage, the shields, the warp bonuses have all been completely cranked up. Hopefully it was just about the same as it was before or looking or reading off the patch notes here it looks like it could even be better and give more bonuses which is excellent i just don't understand why they just didn't include this in the original 4.0 upgrades that would have made a lot of people more happy so again better late than never really really happy with what the team have gone ahead and compromised on so the next few lines are all about the stat bonuses on procedural jetpacks, hazard protection, pulse engine upgrades, hyperdrive upgrades have been increased as well, which again is really good. The drop rate of spawning sacks retrieved by delivering frigate from fleet expeditions has been increased as well. Significantly reduced the likelihood of incoming damage to break a piece of technology while the exosuit shields are charged. 
So that was a new mechanic that they brought into the game. That was a, a very 50-50 split. But it looks like, again, they are listening to the community and they are rebalancing it. So we'll see how that goes. Personally, that didn't particularly bother me if it did damage anything because things are quite easy these days just to repair. So I understand why they did it, um, but I know some people were, were quite upset about that. So then it goes on to save, uh, fixed a, a number of issues where different pop-ups would take the same scrolling input. So again, that's a big one. And I can imagine people getting very frustrated with that. Fixed an issue that prevented uh, changing tabs in the freighter inventory whilst hovering over an empty slot. Again, a really nice fix. Fixed an issue that caused critical damage hazard protection to appear and become recharged and functional when sitting in a starship. Again, I can Im it's never happened to me that one, but I can imagine that could be very uh, annoying. Uh, hazard protection now notes on the hood when it's critically damaged fantastic that is something that i know for a fact a lot of people will take advantage of when reporting a base the owner's name is now clearly displayed in the ui brilliant stuff because there have been times on the weekend missions for example that people have gone ahead and built structures around the actual objective and it, it doesn't happen on every single weekend mission, but it's very annoying when it does happen. And or even on like expeditions as well, I've seen it happen. And it's it's good that when we can report people, we actually get a name as well. So that again, that's really, really nice to see. So guys, this is a pretty long patch note. This is kind of like the second page of it. Uh, fix an issue that caused missions to fail to recognize when Exocraft technology was correctly charged. Fixed an issue that caused some items such as projectile ammunition to build the wrong amount when crafted. So, you know, I can imagine, you know, trying to get some ammunition and you're only getting like one or two rather than whatever it is supposed to be. That that could be uh, very frustrating. Uh, fixed an issue that allowed players to salvage the only operational starship why why would you want to salvage your only operational starship you would get stranded immediately but there we go i'm glad they have fixed that because that's something that i would do um fix an issue that could strand players on the space station if they managed to dock with a broken pulse engine yes yes i am fully for that i'm glad they've done that because that did catch me out before i uh, fixed an issue that could leave some players floating in space when reloading the save i uh, fixed an issue that prevented players with very large inventories from seeing all of their items when transferring to another inventory such as storage containers fantastic that that's a really nice fix uh fix a number of clashes between changing inventory tabs and changing stack sizes uh fix an issue that could cause some newly acquired inventory items to be visually missing from the main inventory i have noticed that myself and i'm glad that's fixed uh the starting slots difficulty settings now as additional inventory slots as well as additional companion and squadron slots don't know how i feel about that don't know how i feel about that but again all about compromise we'll move on uh, the visual quality of stars has been improved when using taa or F fsr 2.0 the visual effects for the final atlas station of the artemis path have been improved Ooh, more eye candy is always is always welcome in my in my book uh, fixed, a next, uh, fixed a network matchmaking issue, which is good. Uh, and then it just goes on for, you know, Xbox Series uh, S and X crash related stuff. Uh, PlayStation 5 crashes have been fixed as well. Inventory related crashes uh, that could occur when loading the game. Fixed a memory related crash on PlayStation 5. And fixed a crash relating to the recipe page within the information portal so there you have it guys that is an amazing patch coming to all platforms very very soon and like i said if you are on pc you can switch over to experimental right now to take full advantage of all of those updates because every single one of them bar one that i didn't agree with 
I find was absolutely immensely great. It was a, such a welcome addition and it just goes to show that when the community isn't happy about something and it goes to show that the team at Hello Games are quick to listen and they are quick to act and they do care about the community. Now, some of the things they are compromised on but you know what, it is all about compromise, which I'm absolutely 100% for. And again, I can just only thank the team at Hello Games for the hard work that they do and for the love that they put into the game. They love the community, you can tell that they really do take everything on board and they take absolutely everything seriously and they do their best and they go with what their vision of Norman Sky is, but they also take our considerations as well, which again, Fantastic, and I want to say a massive thank you as well to Mr. Sean Murray himself for keeping us updated with these experimental patches over on Twitter too. Anyway, guys, that's everything from me here today, and as always, my name is Professor Cynical, and I'll catch you all again in the next one. Bye for now.